Well, with me now in Portsmouth, Charles Harrity from the GMB Union. Mr Harrity, I mean, without diminishing anything in terms of what this means for these workers and their families, it is just economics. No orders, no work, no future. I would say it's more a case of no planning, no strategy. For the past two years, the GMB Union has been knocking on the door of BAE and the government to ask them what is the plans for post-2014 when the aircraft carriers will be finished. And we have not heard one positive move from either party. And I, and I think it's not good for a government to government minister to sit on the sidelines and say, well, this is inevitable. He has a responsibility to the people of Portsmouth and he has a responsibility to the, to the British people to make sure that he does have strategies in place to deal with such events. Well, if there was no strategy and they knew this was coming down the line with such a, a <clears throat> long degree of potential planning, as you suggest, does rather suggest it is actually all about Alex Salmond, it is all about Scottish referendum coming up, and they had to keep Govan open. I don't think this is a case of Portsmouth versus Govan. I think this is really about whether a British government, the condemned government, has any kind of industrial strategy at all. I think the evidence of the day shows that they haven't. They are um, so tied to their free market ideology that they will allow the devil to take the hindmost. Let's put that in another way then. Here we are in what is often perceived as the uh, affluent south, southeast even. Um, you look at Scotland, you look at Central Belt, with an accent like yours, you don't need me to read all off names like Ravenscraig, Linwood, Gark, Kosh, Caterpillar, all the rest of them. For those kinds of reasons, there was also a necessity to keep government open, was there not? I, th I think there's a necessity to keep um, workplaces open uh, uh, anyway, but I, I, as I say, I, do, I would not want to get into an argument of either Govan goes, goes down the river, so to speak, or Portsmouth goes down the river. If the government had planned properly and if BAE had actually taken seriously the concerns of the trade union, they may not find themselves in this position. And the actual fact of the matter is that while we can have these discussions, there are 900 plus families in Portsmouth who now face a very uncertain future. There are a, a whole group of apprentices who have come into this yard looking forward to being skilled um, engineers and they are now facing a completely uncertain future as to what they're going to do. We are talking about people who are 18, 19 years old. But, but very briefly, very skilled people, highly transferable skills, great for the labour market, they could move. I think, again, my response to that would be, well, they may well be able to move, but there are a thousand pay packets going out of Portsmouth. There is a knock-on effect to the, the services and to the, the shops that, are, that these people spend their money in. That money, when it goes out of the city, won't come back. That's going to have a knock-on effect for the whole of Portsmouth as well as Southampton. Charles, we'll have to leave it there. Thanks very much for Thank being you. out with us in the cold.